What's up guys, Anton here at DPR and today we're gonna go over the Red Stripe Lace Clown that we've showed you, uh, I think it was like a month ago or something. And also we have a clutch in the incubator that went completely bad but we still have two eggs in there and we're gonna go over that if you really let's jump right in. We've teased you that clutch in the past, this Red Stripe Lace Clown. I think it's an amazing avenue for the future. But before showing you those babies, we're gonna show you some of the adults that made this clutch possible. I'm gonna show you the, the father that sired this clutch. It's a Mojave Red Stripe Lace Yellow Belly, 100% head for clown. Uh, nice looking male. He's a very small breeder, very, very picky eater. So we're not breeding him to a lot of stuff. Really this year, actually, he's completely off. We're just trying to put more weight on him. Um, we'll see how it goes in the future, but uh, so far this smell is just sitting there and trying to enjoy a free buffet. But I'm gonna show you the uh, mother that produced this one. So actually, uh, the mother that made all of her lace clown project possible. And it's this female right here, which is a Mojave white lace. Um, ah, oh, nice, she just shed. Um, so that's a Mojave white lace. White lace is basically the super form of the lace project. And if you know what a Mojave looks like, you know that this animal is extremely bright. She has that crazy grayish tones all across the belly. Uh, really, really nice looking snake. She is absolutely amazing uh, as an adult, crazy looking snake. Definitely Mojave is not the best gene to show the potential of the white lace. Uh, genes like pastel and yellow belly are definitely way more accurate to show the potential of the lace project. But she's still the mother that produced all of her lace stuff in the clown project so far. Um, now this baby from her is gonna do some work for us eventually, but I'm gonna show you the babies that might be the next generation of great breeders here at DPR. So we're gonna go over the very simple stuff first. This baby here and the other one are um, orange dream combos, 100% head for clown. This one, I thought initially that it was a orange dream lace. Now I'm less convinced that it is an OD lace. I think it's just a very nice looking orange dream. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Well, I mean, it could be lace, but I've seen some OD lace combos and they look just great. Uh, I don't, don't, don't think this one is. This is orange dream yellow belly, 100% head for clown. Uh, great looking combo, uh, but nothing absolutely groundbreaking here. This one here is basically an exact replica of dad. This is a Mojave red stripe lace yellow belly, 100% head for clown. I love the look of that snake as a hatchling. Um, just the contrast between those kind of grayish uh, browns and that bright yellow dorsal and those granity patterns on the side. I really, really like this animal a lot. This is uh, basically a female that we're holding back. And this one right here is a red stripe yellow belly lace, 100% head for clown. So this is a non Mojave version, a great looking snake for sure. I really, really enjoy um, to see what lace is bringing to a red stripe yellow belly. So lace is really definitely bringing a lot of intensity inside of the red stripe yellow belly combination. It basically opens up a lot. The dorsal, the flaming, the red flames are going all across that back. This one was for sale. He sold uh, going to Levance at Straight Fire Reptiles. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, I, with your collection, I can't start to imagine what you'll do with a male like this. Definitely one of my favorite hatchling from the clutch, but let's show you the visuals now. This one here is basically the visual red stripe lace of the clutch. I really wanted to see the interaction of red stripe and lace together. Red stripe is such an important gene in the clown project and I think lace is really starting to become one as well. So having these two genes together inside of a male is really a powerful um, male for the future. And I really like how you kept that dorsal really, really open like the magma. You know, um, it was called the magma project because it looks like a crack of lava. Uh, going on the back of the animal. Really, really like that interaction. And the lace really brought a uh, very stripy animal, removed a bit of the like teardrops on the side and added those spots all across that snake. And it really kept a real popcorn belly that you see on lace clowns. Uh, really nice looking animal. And it's gonna age amazingly well. That's what lace does. It's an enhancing gene. It's like an incomplete dominant desert ghost. So this animal is gonna look amazing in the future. But a cool thing is that you can double up both these genes so you could have a white lace super red stripe clown. Definitely something that we're gonna be uh, working on in the future. Uh, maybe a little hard to do right now, but definitely in the plans. We also have another animal to show and just give me a second, I'll pick him up. This one is a kind of a tough one for me to identify. This is, 
I'm pretty sure is a red stripe yellow belly clown. I don't think this one has lace, but I don't really know why it is so striped like that. Maybe some blade going on uh, inside of her clown lineage. I've never produced any stripy animals from uh, the mother, but who knows? Um, we'll see in the future. We're keeping this one just as a backup male. I, I couldn't stress enough how backup males are important in a collection. So we'll keep him if it's just a red striped yellow belly clown. That's what it is. But anyways, we'll see in the future. Let me know, guys, in the comment, what do you think? Do you think this animal could be hiding a lace? I know that as babies, lace can sometimes be very tough to ID, but um, I kind of have a feeling that that's just a red striped yellow belly clown. So I talked about a clutch that turned bad. Um, it didn't turn bad right during incubation. It actually turned bad uh, right when the female laid. I don't know if you've seen that on Instagram stories, but I posted a black pastel mahogany female that when she laid, she burst open one or two of her eggs and it really created a big mess around the entire clutch. And I had to, some, some of that um, liquid was like uh, dried up on the eggs and I had to scrape it off gently with a scissor. Um, I'll post a video now a bit of like what I did back at that point, but I basically removed all the goo as much as I could from the eggs. but. When I placed them into incubation, I had really, really little hope for not a whole clutch to uh, stay healthy and, and not rot and, and get super moldy. So I used, uh, I monitored the clutch like constantly, almost every day. I used some foot powder um, just to prevent mold inside of that um, incubation bin to prevent some of the eggs to mold. It was a nine egg clutch. Uh, we lost two right away because these are the two that burst open. And during incubation, we lost another uh, five of them. So now we only have two left. Uh, I kept the, um, the bin very dry during the entire incubation. The main reason was to avoid a lot of uh, mold. So if it's super wet, it uh, creates an environment that the mold could actually grow on. And we are, were left with only do, two of these eggs. I don't think this one's gonna be any more good because as you can see, it's pretty bad, uh, but we still kept it. If you um, like incubate your eggs, one really, really good tip to know if your eggs are still good is Use your nose. Your nose is really one of the best tool you have. If it smells so bad, like this egg is for sure gone. It's not good anymore. This egg looks super terrible, but it actually doesn't smell bad at all. And if there's an egg in an incubator that is turning bad, you'll know right away, they smell terrible. So I don't know, we'll cut it open right now. Day 60, we'll see how it goes. But uh, the other egg, actually, it's kind of interesting, can come here closer. Since I kept it super dry during incubation, this egg was really, really wrinkly and started to dehydrate. So I had to cut open a little opening, just tiny, tiny right there. And with a little pipette, I added a little bit of water every day just to keep that baby from dehydrating. And it actually looks very good now because it the, the the egg actually plumbed back up. It was really, really wrinkly, like very, very bad. And now it's it looking good. Um, so we'll see. I don't know how this clutch is gonna turn out, but I'm super curious. Without further ado, we're gonna cut. This one has already a little opening. I'm not gonna do uh, too big of a cut. I'm just gonna cut a little bit just to see if the baby inside is doing okay um, and how we can maybe assist it if there's any need. And here we have it. Yeah, that's how I expected it. That's a super, super tiny baby. Look at that super tiny head. Um, yeah, I don't know if this baby's gonna survive or not. This looks like a cypress heck clown. Um, very, very small um, little baby there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, doesn't look to be too dehydrated. It looks kind of good, still needs to absorb. Um, we're gonna leave it alone. Uh, in the incubator, but I'm really curious about this one. Do you think guys that we have any possible leads of having a baby? This eggs, yeah, I don't even have to cut it. This egg is super, super firm. Uh, I know for sure that there's no baby inside of that. Uh, it just, it doesn't smell bad, but there's no way that this has um, a baby ball python inside. I'm still gonna open it just so you guys uh, see what's inside and we're gonna be blessed with a delicious smell of a uh, very wrinkly egg uh, in the incubator. But uh, yeah, no, as you can see, nothing in there. It's just a pure mess of goo. Uh, so yeah, that's what it is. We still managed to save one of the baby. Um, I think that one of the reasons why it is so small is mostly because the incubation process was really dry. Uh, but I think that if it was super wet as we usually incubate, I don't think that this egg would have made it because the bottom of the egg was completely rotten. And we use that foot powder to keep it healthy. We'll try to keep it healthy. 
So this baby managed to go all the way to hatchling. We'll see how uh, this baby comes out. Um, hopefully, we're probably not gonna do a, a video on it on YouTube, but if you check our Instagram page, you'll see update on that baby, if he survives or not. Uh, if it's very small, we're just gonna have to do special care for him or her. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, sometimes just like these little things might be able to save you a clutch. But it's part of it, that pairing was crazy. It was a Cypress Fire Spot Nose Clown to a Black Pastel Mahogany. Everything would have either been Cypress or Spot Nose Pet Clown. A crazy combo. I would have loved to have like a Cypress Mahogany Black Pastel type of thing. Um, but it is what it is. We'll repeat that pairing this year. Um, it's part of bringing ball pythons. You win some, lose some. But we have a baby out of there. It's just a Cypress, but it is what it is, guys. Uh, on this, be sure to follow us on Instagram to see updates on this clutch. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check our Morph Market for available animals. We'll see you in other videos. Cheers.